fact, this napkin, it came from Hobby Lobby and we're gonna be using it to do the iron one method to one of these wood risers. You can grab these at Target's Bullseye Playground for five bucks. I was lucky enough to get them for $1.99 at one of my off-brand retailers. Because we want the design on the napkin to pop through, we're gonna give it a nice white layer of paint to have in the background. And I'm doing around the edges too. I did not like the MDF kind of showing on the sides. I thought it would look better with white paint than having that kind of popping out. And people don't let me tell y'all how to decoupage. If you don't want to paint this and you're okay with your little wood grain showing through your decorative napkin design, leave it just like it is. For our medium on this project, I'm using a deco art decoupage in the matte finish. And I'm putting a juicy, thick layer on the top here, okay? Don't hold back, don't be shy. It's one of the few times I'm gonna tell you more is more and more is good. And we're gonna let this dry, okay? We're gonna let this dry for several hours. And if I'm being honest with y'all, this is why I don't do this method very often because of the dry time. You're gonna be melting the napkin, basically, in my opinion, to the Mod Podge. And here's our beauty right now. Look at this little gem. I want it to make sure that the whole top was covered in our pattern. And as you can see, this napkin has four trucks, which is great for us to be able to get four projects out of the napkin, but not when you need one piece of the truck and more of the blue. So I had to dissect the napkin and cut out extra pieces of the blue. Typically, I would just kind of paint around the sides, do a little tear method, but I really wanted this to just be one solid piece. So I'm like, all right, Brandy, we're gonna cut this sucker up and then we're going to piece this together, making my life as difficult as possible and ironing them little section by little section. You wanna make sure you get all the little sneaky layers off the back of your napkin before you start. And then it's time to bring in the parchment paper. That's right, people, the parchment paper now gets an entrance on the channel, okay? If you're still waiting for the stapler, just sit down, cause it's not coming in this video. All right, now back to our project. You're gonna wanna make sure you have a nice little sliver of your parchment paper that's gonna fit over your project and then center Aww. your napkin before you get carried away with your iron. Next, we're gonna bring in the iron. <laughs> and this is the one I'm using. You guys use whatever iron you want. And no, I am not sure what the heat setting on this little sucker is. I do plan on investing in a bigger iron so that way I have more of a gauge on the temperature I get asked that a lot as well and I can just tell you that I put this sucker on max and I roll on with it It works really well for the most part But I do have some people say that if I had a bigger iron and I could turn the heat up that I would have better Applications with certain projects, but as for the iron one method I've never actually had any issues using this little iron doing these kind of DIY projects a little tip if you're gonna to piece together a napkin like this doing the iron one method, make sure you're actually just ironing the main sections of your napkin down and not the entire thing. Go section by section because you are melting that Mod Podge and you don't want to activate it before you apply your napkin in the sections you're doing at each time. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> then once you have all your little sections attached, Go over it one good time for a couple minutes, just making sure that bond is on there really well. And as you can see, this is why I say the iron on method is absolutely one of the best decoupaging methods you could possibly do. It's flipping flawless. People, I was so super excited to try this little finger sander thingy out. Oh my gosh, it's Velcro. The little strips are all different like grits. Picked this up from Timu and oh my gosh, it is so easy and I love it just so much. <laughs> just throwing that out there, okay? I told y'all after my haul, you were gonna start seeing me pop little things in that I was gonna be using them and this was one I just couldn't, oh my gosh, I can't wait to just go down there, 
and get all the little bits of sandpaper that I keep around in my bucket because this is all I'm going to keep down there now. I love it. For our sealer, I'm going to be using this dishwasher safe Mod Podge. Okay. I am going to be selling this in my vendor space and I want to make sure whoever purchases it can clean it. You know what I mean? And not have any issues of food or something like that gets on it if they want to sit in the middle of the table or whatever. And before I am applying our sealer, just taking a microfiber cloth and making sure I get all the little sandy bits from our sanding off of our piece. This napkin is one of my favorites in my stash and I could not wait to use it on this little piece. Let me know what you guys think of this one down in the comments. Walmart has a bunch of ceramic pieces for a decent size and a decent price. This was $3.94 and I love owls so home it came and we're about to get to business with this little piggy bank first things first i took its little plug <laughs> out of the bottom of it there and i gave it a nice coat of white matte paint and painting it is completely up to you the napkin i'm using has a white base and i want it to be flawless between the napkin and the color of the owl as you can see here there is a slight variation in the color between the original and adding the white paint. This beautiful napkin I picked up recently at TJ Maxx and I knew exactly what I was gonna use this for. I could not wait to get this napkin on here. What I was really surprised at, which is not often, is how big the napkin was and the fact that the pattern carried on for almost the entire napkin. I loved having so much of this print to be able to mess with and I had the whole other side of the napkin left as well. So I just stashed that away for another DIY. You know what I'm saying? We just hold on to it and hoard it until we need it again. When you're working with a piece like this, there are many ways you can attack it. But for me, I knew that I wanted this to be decoupaged in the direction that makes sense when you stare at a piece. So I want it the head to be decoupaged a certain way, the belly, the back. I want it, the print, to actually face naturally the way that I think it would if I'm staring at it. I hope that makes sense. So for me, I had to make sure that I was applying the exact sections of this napkin in the exact places and then piecing together certain parts because I didn't want to just apply the whole print over the whole ceramic piece and in order for me to be able to accomplish this the way that i envisioned it there were several steps i had to take one was getting rid of the edge of this napkin on almost every single napkin it has this little edge and usually i leave them and don't fuss over them at all but for this particular thing since we're going to be glossing this I wanted to make sure everything was flawless and we could not tell where the napkin began and our ceramic piece started. For our medium, we're gonna be using Mod Podge Gloss and for the application, I'm using a fan brush. I'm a huge fan of the fan brushes because I'm able to use them to kind of smush in between and double check making sure if our napkins get attached really well. And to help us accomplish this, to make sure that all the pieces are pressed in really well, we're gonna use a bunched up little piece of cling wrap. This is going to really smooth out our napkin and make sure it gets in all the little grooves that are on our piggy bank. I cannot stress enough how this should be done in tiny sections. Once you get this tiny little spot I'm doing right here attached, you're gonna then flip the napkin up and see how that little bit that I just did in that little spot and you're gonna carry on. If you wanna just slap your napkin on here, do the whole thing, you go right ahead. But if you want a flawless look and when you see the end result, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. You want a flawless look, you do this piece by piece and section by section. And as you're going through with this right here, you're going to see where you can naturally tear this and bend it around the grooves that are in the porcelain piece. And I highly recommend checking the edges of the napkin as you go. Before you start removing the excess of the napkin, make sure that it's dry because we're going to be using water on the edge of a paintbrush to find those natural creases where you ended your Mod Podge and tear this. The napkin will gently pull away from the section that does not have any Mod Podge on it. And you want to also make sure that you're not applying the water 
on the napkin where the Mod Podge is, it will reactivate the Mod Podge if it is not waterproof Mod Podge and this wasn't. So I wanted to make sure that I clarify that before you guys are like, let me just paint it over here and then tear it. It will tear it in the wrong spot. So definitely be very ginger doing this. And in case you're wondering, because I did not speed up this section, it took me over three hours to create this little piece with the decoupaging. I take my decoupage art very seriously. <laughs> but on a side note, I have not made one of these for you guys. I have been asked to make one of these for all of you. If you enjoyed this piece, let me know in the comments below. I have a ton of ceramic pieces I'd love to get my hands on and decoupage with you. Also, be mindful because <laughs> it will stick to your fingers like it's going there. The napkin bits will break off if you have Mod Podge on your hand. For the front of the face and the sides of the face, I wanted to make sure that they weren't completely covered by the florals and that the florals, like I said in the beginning, were facing the proper way when you're looking at the piece. So this way, you didn't look at it and see upside down flowers or anything like that or too many. You could differentiate the fact that there were eyeballs right there, there's a nose, there's a belly. So I just carefully placed certain pieces of the napkin and then moved forward with that. I did the same thing with the belly and pieced it together as well. And this cling wrap, just kind of using that to attach, it really gets in the grooves so perfectly. I let this dry for about 30 minutes and then came back in with our paintbrush with a little bit of water and went around all the ends of the napkin where I did not have any Mod Podge and remove the excess. And you're going to want to take your time with this because you're going to notice that certain little sections of the napkin will bunch where the water and the Mod Podge meet and you're going to just kind of pull that apart. You can use a fingernail or a clay tool to do that. So this way it's a smooth transition from the napkin to the piece. And then you can take a little bit of Mod Podge like I'm doing here on a tiny paintbrush and going in those grooves to just kind of fold out the napkin to just blend in the creases and it just looks so amazing. Now you noticed I didn't decoupage the feathers, right? That's because we're gonna use some mica powder <laughs> in these two little paint brushes. One's for the mica powder, this one right here, and the other one is for some brown paint we're gonna use to go in between the feathers. I decided, so mica powder is definitely messy to work with, be mindful, but I wanted some shine. And these have a really nice shine on them that kind of just pops out with a little bit of like, I don't know, like a silver going on, like a glitter. You know what I mean? So I really just wanted to add a little bit of something. I did leave some of the feathers white. So this way it blended in with the whole piece. I used a couple colors that match the napkin, of course. And how dark you want these really just depends on how much you kind of smear in your colors. Now, obviously, you've seen all the powder. I was like, <laughs> just blowing it off as I went. I let this sit for a couple minutes and then came back in with some of that white paint and just tied in between where the napkin ended and some spots that I felt like the mica powder made a little bit of a mess on. And then in the process of all this, decided against the brown and then used the green. And honestly, I don't think it mattered because it turned out looking black to me for the feathers. You could leave it as it is, but I wanted to add this in here just to give a little bit of pop in the feathers, but get some unity as a whole that they were kind of all connected. And people, your lines don't need to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Just smooshing one in there because we're going over this anyway. Once I was finished with this, I took a little bit of that white paint on my finger and then did a dry brushing over all the feathers to kind of just blend this in. And then I let that dry and took some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax and gave all of the feathers and the little feet a gentle little smoosh. I have this beautiful ornate mirror right at my front door and I like to hang something in the center of it. And I've been wanting to put a pair of rustic bells in there and I just haven't found anything that I wanted. So I picked these up from Dollar Tree. 
They're both different, just so you can see the design. And we're going to give them a nice healthy coat of this Dixie Bells Driftwood. This is a chalk paint, and I like to do chalk paints on stuff like this because I know I'm not going to be doing coat after coat after coat. It is going to take me one and I'm pretty much done. I might have to do a touch up here and there. And because I'm keeping these, I didn't paint the whole thing. <laughs> got a little lazy. Mind your businesses, okay? Y'all paint your bells however you want. Now here's our beautiful napkin that we are using for the bells. And I'm only tearing out the little ornate design because that's all I wanted. And I just tore out six so I could put three on each bell the rest i'm going to really kind of age in between those designs with the napkin a little tip when you are doing something rounded like this you can tear your napkin as you apply your decoupage this way you will get a more flat application versus bunching in different sections of the napkin. I waited for these to completely dry before I started the next step, which we're going to kind of create that rusted look using these paints and a little sponge I just cut. And we're just gonna dab this in different sections. You wanna definitely make sure as you're going through that you're waiting for things to dry, whether it's a few hours or the next day, because a little tip, you should not use your heat gun to heat up the Mod Podge to rush the drying process. It will only reactivate your Mod Podge and make it warm, kind of like the iron on method. It heats up the Mod Podge and makes it sticky again. Once I was happy with this, I decided I needed some raised spots. I wanted these to look really rustic and old. So with a little bit of a high-end look, <laughs> so I took some spackling and some mica powder and just kind of mixed up some colors together until I got a look that I was happy with. You guys can completely skip this and go to the step after this if you want. Remember, I'm actually creating these for my home aesthetic and just sharing the idea with you guys. Do this in your own image. I'm just over here giving y'all the idea. Roll with it, my people. Roll with it. Now, this stuff does not stick on here lightly. Be mindful of that as you're smearing it on here. And I was not particular. I just knew that I wanted to have clumps of it in certain sections to create little raised rustic lumpy areas on the bells. I let these dry for about two hours and then I came in with a dry brush with a little bit of white paint. Now I will tell you I mucked this up because I was not mindful of the napkin. I want it the ornate design to kind of pop out around the dry brushing a little bit and I got a little carried away <laughs> so if you go to recreate this keep that in mind try not to completely dry brush over your napkin hiding your design once I was happy with the dry brushing I then took some of Dixie Bell's silver gilding wax and really started hitting up these bells and covering over sections I know you guys are sitting there like oh Brandy these are not silver rustic bells just trust the process <laughs> people trust the process I literally even after I just showed you that I went back over with more silver gilding wax I then took these crappy scissors I don't know who in this house is running off with my craft scissors but I want to harm them they all think it's funny I know somebody has them I went out and bought a nice new pair the other day and I told them let them come I'm gonna toss everybody's room it's gonna be like a raid up in this house they better stop playing like mm, irritate anyhow I took some of this Dollar Tree nautical rope and put through our bells and used some of Dollar Tree's metal ribbon and just pinched it around our top hoop area this is going to help keep the bells in the spots that I want them in and I also added a little floral decorative spot right above the top of the bells if you want to put a clapper in the bell as well you go right ahead at the bottom of the robe i decided not to i simply love how these turned out i'm going to rip the top off and we're going to use an 80 grit sandpaper with my cordless ryobi sander to make that happen but of course <laughs> Having a time with this, ain't I? Yeah, like, let me just fly. Oh my. My kids have such a time at my expense. 
It's like, I tell you what, man, you should hear some of these kids. I did go by hand and take an 80 grit piece of sandpaper and do a scuff sand over the entire piece before I took a primer and went over this. I needed to tape the bottom off. You want to make sure that if you're going to stain a section that you tape a section and they have other stuff that you can buy people for this to protect your I'm just this is how I'm rolling with it okay paper towels painter's tape cover the top and then I'm just going to prime the bottom and put some white rust-oleum paint on here I feel like it's beautiful out let's get the spray painting done instead of hand painting because you know sometimes hand painting is tedious and I'm just not in a mood I want to spray paint. <laughs> I like to spray paint. I put one more coat on this and brought it in the house. Now, if you're not familiar with this, people bear with me. I wanted to decoupage this beautiful vintage looking napkin I picked up from Christmas tree shops. They have beautiful napkins. And I watched a video that Holly over at Hot Humble Pie did. And she was burning the burning the edges to give it like this vintage look. So please be safe, people. <laughs> like at this, I am not responsible. So if you're going to burn something, just be, I watched Holly do it. I thought this would be an amazing add on. I love Holly. So I decided to do that with this piece and put the napkin on there with some Mod Podge. Now I then take this stencil that I've used before and go over top of the decoupage in different variations of colors giving it a different look blends to because we're going to do some stain art on the top so I really kind of wanted all of these to just kind of blend in with everything now now that it's all said and done, future me is telling you, I wish I would have put more napkins underneath the stencils, but I was already in it at this point and did not feel like starting over. I paid $15 for the piece. I really didn't want to spend days and days and days because I'm not reselling it for hundreds of dollars and it's just not going to be worth the hassle of ripping it all off and redoing it. So I then distressed the same way I did with the crate and added in some of the color distress and then in a little bit you'll see we go over with the sandpaper and don't be afraid to get messy people get your fingers in there smush it all around you know that's the fun of it to get dirty look I love when I'm all done and my hands are just 10 different colors <laughs> because I'm like man I was having a good time <laughs> Now it's time for my favorite part. We are going to do some stain art on the top of this and blend some colors in. As you can see here, I have them all set up so you can get a good idea of about how much water and about how much paint is going into this. I do have other videos where I go a little bit more into detail, so I can link that below for you. I just posted a laundry one recently, but I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, people, short and sweet. I'm starting this off with my lightest color and allowing that to kind of soak in here. I do try to wait a couple minutes in between switching colors to let it dry. And then as I start the blend and get a beautiful blend on top of a beautiful blend, I'll let it dry for 30 minutes here, an hour there. It really depends on the weather. Sometimes it's warmer, sometimes it's colder. On this particular day, I was able to get all of this done in just a few hours. I do want to stress though, if you go to do this, it's so important to go the entire length of the wood grain. I, it will be splotchy people, it'll be splotchy if you stop in the middle. You want it to look like this where it's just so smooth. And once you continue layering this, it starts to blend and it just looks beautiful. And also, if you get in certain areas you have too much, don't be afraid to take a paper towel or your dry sponge and take off some of that paint. But here it is. Here it is as I let it dry for one last time. That was the very end of it. <laughs> and I put a poly on it to seal it. Now, this is distress, right? We're distressing. So I'm going to go in here with my sandpaper and distress all these little edges. I do leave some spots out because I 
didn't want to just do the whole thing. I wanted it to look kind of organic. So I just did heavy in some spots, light in other spots, and did go in between all of these little wood pieces. I really love the way that this aged piece turned out. It's so stunning. photo stand we're going to be using a lemon napkin and a piece of wood the shape of the wood is entirely up to you and we're going to be doing the cling wrap method to attach this napkin and if you've never used cling wrap to decoupage well you're in for a treat because it works pretty well on napkins just cut your cling wrap down to size and the spot on the napkin Bring in your parchment paper and cut you a nice little sliver. This is going to help your iron to not stick to the parchment paper because I've learned the cling wrap will absolutely stick to the bottom of that sucker and just melt all on the bottom of it and make your iron kind of gross. Anyhow, now that you've learned from me, then you're just going to iron over the sucker for a couple of minutes, just making sure that the napkin is stuck everywhere you can check this just by pulling it up and seeing if it's not separating from your wood. When you're happy with that, you can seal it with whatever you want to seal it. I decided to take one of our subscribers advice here and use another piece of cling wrap to seal over the top. I did really feel impressed by this, but just to feel fuzzy inside, I did take some more Mod Podge and go over, especially on the ends, to make sure it wouldn't be peeling up. It did do that after I sanded off all the edges, and even though there's cling wrap on here, it was still super easy to just sand and get all the extra bits off. I used this medium to do our seal, and like I said, I just went over the edges really well and did a very thin coat over the top. I feel like the cling wrap on top did a hell of a job at making sure that this napkin was on here. While that was drying, I took some half beads and painted them with some antique Waverly wax and a couple tumbling blocks for our stand. I'm using Gorilla Glue Gel to attach the pieces because I just really like how well this holds and it doesn't have a smell like the E6000. This is one of my favorite glues to use and I put the little half beads on the corners and here's just a little clip so it can hold our little decorative piece or a photo. Let these dry for about 30 minutes before you attach them to your base. Now you can use whatever base you want. I'm just using a little wood cut out here and the tumbling blocks along with some wood glue for a good long hold and that's it for this one. This project you can use any glass piece that you want. I had this hurricane vase from Dollar Tree laying around that I had already spray painted with frost glass spray paint. And I don't really have a favorite. I just grab whatever's the cheapest when it comes to frost glass spray paint. We're going to be using this napkin right here. And something I never do is actually trim the napkin down with scissors around the design. Usually I kind of tear it or rip it, but for this, I want it to be as precise as I could possibly get it. And in case you're new here, hi, my name is Brandy. And whenever I'm decoupaging a napkin, I recommend less is more. I try not to just coat huge areas and slap it on there and pray that it doesn't get wrinkly. I try to do little section by little section. And then I use a sponge, especially for something like this, 
because it helps curve it. And no, it's not a wet sponge, it is a dry sponge. I really like using this method because napkins are porous. And if you do put too much Mod Podge on, the napkin is going to have that seep through it. The sponge will catch it on the other side and it will prevent any extra spreading, tearing, or ripping of your napkin. Another method you could use is like the cling wrap or saran wrap or whatever and you roll it up in a little ball and then you can like move it all over the place. That will give you a nice smooth finish as well. But I found that if I use too much Mod Podge in a spot, it will actually rip the napkin when, <laughs> when I'm trying to smooth it out. So this just works best for me. There is no right or wrong way to Mod Podge or Deco Podge, however you want to say it. You just do what works for you. And I'm always offering tips, tricks, and little things that help me along the way to help you possibly make better projects for your home or to sell or for gifts or whatever. For this next part, we're going to take some yellow mica powder and some Mod Podge and we are going to smoosh it all up together really, really good. I wanted to create this area on the frosted glass that kind of faded into the napkin and the frosted glass, kind of making it look like it's all just one piece. And I wanted it to be a little shiny. So the mica powder is going to give me that effect. If you do not want that, you could use regular paint and some baking soda, mix that together to still get a texture, use the same technique with a sponge and pounce it, and you can still do the fade like this. This would be super cute on a mason jar as well, and you could use with any napkin, any color really. And I took some Dollar Tree stamps that matched the napkin and kind of placed it in between. There was some spots I felt needed a little something to really kind of blend the napkin into the mica powder and the mica powder into the frosted glass. We need to take a trip to Home Depot because we're gonna build our own everything. We're not just gonna stuff this into a frame. So we're gonna pick up some of this underlayment for $10.69. Look how big this piece is. We're gonna cut it down to size, okay? And we have to grab some trim and people, the cost of wood is a little ridiculous these days, but I love this thin lightweight trim piece here because we get eight foot of it and I ship a lot of things. So this doesn't add too much weight to my packages. Plus it's only $10.28. And keep in mind, Home Depot will cut your wood down for you if you don't have tools at home or want to cut them down yourself. I just clamped the underlayment down to a stable surface and then used my jigsaw to cut out my piece. I then went on a Canva and created a design with a little baby cow. When you're printing these types of designs, you can use regular paper if you want to just put it in a frame. If you plan on decoupaging it like I am, rice paper, napkin, gift wrap paper, they will all work. This is a piece of rice paper and I attached it around the edges to a regular size piece of printer paper. It works really easy with double-sided tape. I did not have any, so I used regular tape and gently folded over the edges. I knew I was gonna cut off anyway. Here's our little piece of underlayment that we cut. If you wanna use a Dollar Tree sign or just shove the little picture in a frame, you go right ahead. And if you need measurements for this, here you go. I do cut this a little bit bigger to size. I like creating my pieces like this because I am a decorative artist and I do sell pieces. Glass does not ship well for me. So this allows me the ability to decorate a frame completely how I want in my vision and use whatever extras I want and not worry about the glass breaking because it's decoupaged on here. Plus I wanted to give you guys an idea for those of you that struggle with painting because a lot of you that watch my painting pieces and I don't know if you noticed but there's a little barn back there <laughs> and we're going to be doing some barn painting with spring. And I really wanted to give you guys an idea of how you can print something and make it look like you painted it and create your own frame and everything else. So I really got inspired by that little baby cow, <laughs> which is why we have our little baby cow in this. And if you're over there like Brandy, I can't paint the barn. I can't digitally create the barn. No worries. I do have <laughs> printable digital downloads for sale on my website that I create. I actually really love being able to have the ability to completely hand make the wood projects that I create and put whatever design I create on those pieces as well. For our medium for this video, we're gonna be using Deco Art Decoupage in the mat. And I'm gonna be sealing over this with the Glossy Mod Podge. I will tell you all this, I am not gonna recommend the rice paper that I use and here's why. It 
beautiful for large prints, but I do not care for it for the smaller prints. It really just doesn't, it's thicker than I would recommend when you're decoupaging something smaller. And what I mean by that is if you're cutting this down into little pieces, say you want to section something out, you end up having to go around the edges and sand it down. It's just raised up more than I would care for when I'm decoupaging something. But if you're covering a whole surface from edge to edge, I really love the end result of this rice paper. Just in case you're wondering, I am using a sponge to apply my decoupage and it is a dry sponge. And if you don't have a printer or want to use digital downloads, this idea can be used with Hobby Lobby paper, scrapbook paper, Dollar Tree calendars. You can take wood and create your own custom frame like I did here and just use the idea for whatever makes sense for your home or whatever project you're working on. And right here, I'm just going around the edge with a fan brush, kind of smooshing it in underneath of our rice paper making sure it's all sealed nice and tight once this is dry and that will vary depending on how much mod podge you use it could be 30 minutes it could be three hours it's time to attach our frames so we're gonna need to bring in the miter shears I would not recommend using these for a thicker piece of trim especially if you have hand strength issues or carpal tunnel but for a thin piece like this it's not too bad I do put this on a 45 degree angle and then I dual wield it with both hands as I pinned it. See me taking it off camera. <laughs> I gotta put it in just the right spot to be able to squeeze it on down to get that cut. Ta-da! <laughs> I then repeated the entire process around the whole board. I put the center, like the slanted centerpiece at the very edge of our picture. And then I measured at the very bottom for the same spot. And that's how I cut the 45 degree all the way around. You can use a miter saw or whatever is the easiest for you to cut this. I will also recommend for those of you that have carpal tunnel, wrap a hand towel around the edge of this or use a pair of cooking mitts it's going to give you a better grip and it's going to be so much easier to squeeze the end of those miter shears tight and close like i said i wouldn't recommend this for the larger trim but this is pretty thin and i didn't have a rough time at all cutting this once i had all the pieces measured and in the spots i thought they fit great i painted them up white before attaching them and i'm going to use my favorite type on wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. You can always come back and staple this in as you want on the back. I have not had a problem making these. I use underlayment all the time. I even create stain art with them. I have some videos with that stuff as well. Do be mindful of where you're putting your frame and be mindful of how you're holding your frame. I got a little bit I don't know what the word is. Handsy with this as I was looking at it and I dropped it and cracked the corner. So I had to take some wood glue in there and then I painted over it once it dried. It was fine. I can't tell that I made a boo-boo with it. We're now going to take some of my favorite clay and this Prima mold. You can use any mold you want. You do not have to use a Prima mold. Put a little bit of cornstarch up in there and then take your clay and mold whatever design you want. I'm going to kind of just do one of these little edges here in the section. I'm not even going to use the whole stripe piece, the whole strip, I should say. We're just doing one little section like this. And I made four of these because we're going to put right in the corners. If you don't want to do this part and your edges, your corners are perfectly fine, then don't even worry about it. But when I wanted to add a little bit of something to this frame, just customize it a little bit more give you guys the idea, a little bit of inspiration. And two, if you don't want to do this, here's some other little tips for you. Use caulking, use spackling, and just shove in the edges of your corners if there's gaps. Let that dry. Now, if you want to sand it down, I do not recommend using caulking at all. You're going to want to use spackling. So put the spackling in the edges. It will seal up any of your gaps. Caulking does not sand well. I'm using wood glue on the back of here and I'm just kind of tappity tap 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 in it right in the corner around the edges. This is my favorite clay. It is an air dry clay. So I just let this sit 24 hours 
whenever I use it, I gotta let it sit 24 hours. I'm sorry. Oh, it's such a tedious process, but I love using this clay. It always just allows me to make pieces a little bit more customizable. You can bring in your little clay tools and just kind of shape it to make more sense for whatever it is that you're doing. Here, I'm just kind of making sure that they sit in the corners and all look like they were actually attached to the frame instead of just kind of being plopped down on the top of it. Let this dry 24 hours and then you're ready for your finishing touches. Now I did want to show you guys that you can sand this. This is one of the reasons why I love this paper clay. Not all clay is created equal. Okay. And I do furniture art as well. So this is why I love this stuff. You can sand this. Now this is a high grit sandpaper. I did that on purpose so you could actually see the stripes of the sandpaper in the clay. See how it's really working to sand it. So if you use a smooth piece of sandpaper, it's going to be buttery smooth on your clay as well. For my finishing touches, I'm just taking and painting these white, letting them dry, and then I'm bringing in the crusty bit paintbrush. Brandy, what's a crusty bit paintbrush? Well, I'll tell you what it is, okay? It is one paintbrush that has been piling up and piling up <laughs> that you have not cleaned in a long time. And then we're gonna use that to distress because little did you know, it actually makes for a really nice way to distress your pieces. For this particular piece of decorative art, I didn't wanna go too heavy on the frame. So I kept it really minimal, just adding a little bit of that farmhouse feel in there. I did want this to look like a picture though. I did want it to look like a painted in one here. So I took some more white paint and just went into the frame around the picture itself to make it look like it's painted. And when I was happy with that, I put a little bit of that black and gray mixture on my finger and went over the little ornate designs in the corner. So let's take a look at our Etsy inspiration one last time. It's so funny the things we draw inspiration from and how this little baby cow inspired me to create this piece with this little baby cow. This Etsy dupe is gonna be a little bit more spot on. We're gonna literally create this piece and the only thing we're switching out is the pictures. We're gonna use farmhouse pictures. I printed these off my website. You can use whatever pictures you want. You could even do a reverse decoupage with real pictures if you want it for this piece. Now I use my rice paper and if you remember, I said I do not like using this to kind of cut and piece together. So I'm taking the larger of the pictures and I'm going to place them completely over the wood pieces that we're going to put them on. They did not completely cover, and I'm gonna show you in the reveal how you can see that there is a raised spot on the side. I wish that they completely cover, but once I got them to the point where I was cutting them down, I'm like, shoulda, woulda, cut it at this point. <laughs> we're rolling on with it. I picked these pieces up from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just gonna paint them white for the background. I'm keeping the wood themselves neutral. I am not sure if I'm going to be selling these or not at my vendor space or if I want it to keep them. <laughs> so I did not want to actually paint or stain the wood just yet. So I left them completely neutral. I used my medium and I just decoupaged these suckers right on here. I made sure that the edges were all nice and tight. And once they dried, I took an 80 grit sandpaper and sanded around our edges. Now I did have a few little bubbles in here and let me show y'all how I handle this, okay? We're gonna just take a little Cricut tool, our little Cricut tool. You can use a pin if you don't have this, pin will work just fine. And we're gonna just pop it right on down. Press it easy, don't get wild and start wiggling it. You're just gonna go straight down so you touch the wood and then pull it right back out. And you just keep going around and popping all your little bubbles and then press it down with your finger or your thumb like I'm doing, and then put your sealer right over it and you'll have a nice flat surface. If you don't use the iron one method, this is a great way to get rid of bubbles. Remember I said I'm not fuzzy inside about using the iron one method with the printouts from the printer. Even with the parchment paper, I am scared that the ink is gonna pop up a bit. To create our square frames, I'm gonna use two different size little square dowels out of this multi-pack. 
picked this up from Walmart. It's like five or six bucks. Hobby Lobby, Home Depot, and Lowe's all sell square dowels. So in the event that your Walmart doesn't have this pack, you can pick them up there. Walmart even has dowels and you get like a couple feet for a couple dollars. I use this multi-pack all the time. So I pick it up whenever I see it. My Walmart doesn't always have it. Just in case yours don't either, you now know where you can also get more. What you're currently witnessing is me winging the measurements. I did not actually measure this to size and I just cut and cut and cut until I got the size square that I was happy with that fit behind these little wood ovals. Now we're gonna bring in the stapler because <laughs> we had to bring the stapler in for this project. And the Gorilla Glue. I love this stuff. It sets in like 10 seconds. Not completely, not completely, but it starts working pretty quickly. So I put little dabs on the edges and then I held it in place and stapled. I made sure that this was facing the back of the shape that we were creating. And I did this for each corner, making sure that one piece of the staple was in one side and one piece of the staple was the other side. That was not the easiest thing. Don't let the video footage fool you. <laughs> it took some patience making sure that I had that stapler in there just right. I let that dry for about 10 minutes just to make sure that it was decently put together and then attached our little oval pieces. I did this by just using wood glue. I didn't add any clamps or anything. I put the wood glue where the oval met on the corners and kind of smooshed some more in between there once I was happy with the placement and I let this dry overnight. Now let's take a quick look at our Etsy dupe inspiration piece again. And now here's mine. And as I said, remember I would show you in the reveal that you can see around the edges how it's a little bit raised through the paint even where I tried to blend it. Still looks good, but it's not as good as if the rice paper would be slightly thinner. People, this is one of my favorite farmhouse pieces that I have ever made, and I absolutely love the bowl on this piece. It was back to the drawing board. We had to cut another piece of underlayment. I did it the same exact measurements as the last one. I painted it white. I made sure we had the trim, and I printed out a beautiful picture. Only this time, this one's pretty spot on, people. I was pretty proud of myself. Look at that little baby bull, super cute. I'm loving the little baby cows and the little baby bulls. I'm just really in love with them right now. I mean, I think it's a baby bull. Might be a grown ass bull, but it looks like a baby bull to me. Harley needs a friend. Harley needs a little cow to walk around the yard with. And if Wes had his way, we'd have some chickens as well. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on, back to our picture. We're gonna decoupage this down just the same exact way as we did in the beginning with the first dupe or inspiration, I should say. You guys see them scissors right up there? If you haven't watched my last video where I talk about everybody in my house, someone has robbed me and my other scissors, <laughs> you see them, they're still there, right? No one has touched them. Threatening them <laughs> with going through their rooms has kept my craft scissors in my workspace. I cut the frame the same way, but only I swapped it around the opposite way. That's another reason I love that trim so much is because you don't have to just attach that with the small part in the middle. You can put the small part on the edge and completely get a different effect with the trim. To attach the pieces, I used the same exact technique, the wood glue and the hot glue. I did not staple the back. And now I'm going to heavily distress this piece with this black paint using my finger. Calm down, people. I know you were hoping the Krusty Bit paintbrush made another appearance, but you know we only bring that out for special occasions, okay? Let's take a quick look at our Etsy inspiration. And here is mine. And to start off, we're gonna mix this antique parchment and white with a little bit of water to give this a faux 
bleach would look now recently i had a subby make a comment about you know could i do more of a tutorial style you know i guess i can get a little flashy with the editing and i'm a little speedy um that's just because i'm trying to you know stay on point with what's going on and don't dilly dally but you will notice in this video i slow it down just to go a little bit this is about as tutorial ish if i can get so if for those of you who want me to slow it down more i don't know if i'm capable of it this is what i got so as you can see i'm still showing y'all how i just basically whitewash that and i'm using a tumbling tower block for it to sit on and just dry so it's not touching anything once it dried i'm taking a little tiny bit of the white and just doing the center this is all going to make sense as we go along but you don't want to cover the whole thing you're just going to do the center of your sections so this way once we put our laser print paper on here it's going to really look like that piece you know belongs in the center and everything else is faded out if it's too dark for you please feel free like i'm doing here with the paper towel use it to wipe some off you know my paintbrush does not listen to me or care about my feelings and just rolls everywhere it feels like going let that dry about 20 minutes and then bring in your mod podge it doesn't matter which sheen just pick a sheen doesn't matter now take your laser print you print it out from your laser jet printer cut them up make sure that they're measured all this stuff i pr i made these myself well not really i use canva i picked the images i pr put them in the canva thing and then i printed it out on a laser jet printer on a single piece of paper that's how i did this <laughs> but the whole idea i created yes you're going to cut them all up in pretty little sections and then we are going to just place them down where you want them in the middle of the white make sure they're as centered as you possibly can get them and then let this dry overnight or at least six to eight hours with fan blaring on it do not for those of you who are impatient like me i know it's hard i listen i feel your struggle i feel your pain but let this dry people please let it dry then use whatever makes you fuzzy inside a sponge i'm using a paper towel rag would work put some water on it it does not matter if it's cold or hot it does not matter i probably wouldn't use hot water though just you know come on put some nuke warm water in a bowl a little bit of wetness then we're going to just press it on our little transfer and then rub 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 be careful not to rub, 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 rub too much because you're going to rub, rub, rub off your little, you know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to rub off the transfer. We're just going to rub it down to the last layer. Now, for this, I did not care if it got a little bit messy because it's supposed to be vintage. That's the style of this. That's how I was going. I really like making rustic vintage looking things. It is definitely an aesthetic that I am a huge fan of. But as you can see, these are stunning. Like how beautiful are these coming out? I simply love them and just content listen i know for those of you that are like i'm trying to do this tutorial -ish, so we're slowing it down okay so you're seeing more you know i'm just trying to be a little repetitive here you know stay on you know making sure i'm explaining this properly and you're going to continue with the whole block and rub 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 okay once you have it all rubbed off to the point that you are happy with your transfer then you are going to just get all your little bits get all the crusty bits off of everything because once you're happy with it you don't want to seal it with the mod podge this is a little i don't know it's a little rough coarse sponge that i got from dixie bell it's i don't know it's got like a roughish outside you know and then i'm just using it to kind of get all the little crusty bits off and making sure that it's all nice and smooth before i apply my sealer however before we throw our sealer on here i like to add some accents accents are like my favorite thing to do like they're the thing i like to do after it's kind of finished and you could really leave it alone the way that it is but then you feel like you got to take it one extra step and you can't control yourself you got to just put something on there even if it doesn't really need it 
that's my favorite part <laughs> so I put a little bit of antique Waverly wax in some water just to kind of dim it down so it wasn't so dominant and dark and give this more of a wood grain feel around the edges to really bring out that laser cut in the white and make it look very blended and finished it up with some distressing And people, as always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed these 10 decoupage techniques. And until next time, bye!